Hey, hope you're doing good. Hope your Tuesday's off to a good start. I'm filming this for you on Monday night, and while I'm filming it, you may hear some noises in the background. I've got a little puppy who is constantly wanting my attention right now. Um, he's even moving the curtains behind me as he's looking outside. He's a little fidgety. The house is quiet and people are going to bed, and he, he's wanting some attention right now. And he has a funny way of getting our attention in this house. We trained him to use some bells that hang from our back door. And they were intended to be a way to let us know when he wants to go outside. Um, he has since learned that if he rings the bells, he gets our undivided attention. And then he proceeds to try to tell us what he wants in whatever way he can. So sometimes he rings the bells and he comes along and he comes and shares with us what he wants to do. And then other times he rings the bells and he stands there and he looks at his treats. Or uh, maybe he rings the bells, you open the door, and he just looks outside because that's what he wanted to do was simply to look outside. So you never know what's on his mind and what he's looking for. But he uses those bells, and when he uses them, he uses them persistently. And it reminded me of um, a scripture that I wanted to share with you today. And um, I was thinking about this anyway, because it seems as we get back into the office and get back into our schedules, we're, we're reminded more and more of prayer requests and needs that people have. And we lift these up to the Lord every week and people share them with us through the connection cards and online and through conversations that we have. And we're constantly as a staff, as a whole church staff, not just pastors, but our ministry assistants too, every one of us, we're sharing these prayer requests with each other throughout the week so that we can add them to our prayer list and pass them on to our prayer team that meets on Wednesday night, pass them on to others who will be getting that prayer list. And, and it's ways that we lift this up to the Lord. It reminds me of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. It says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Even now, you maybe hear the bells in the background. My dog's ringing them right now. He probably wants another little milk bone treat. I've already given him a bone to chew on. He's already had food to eat tonight. He's got most of everything that he needs, but he's got something in mind that he wants to communicate with me. It might just be he wants to go crawl in bed with somebody, and he's fidgety until that happens. But he has something on his mind, and he's not going to let it go. God wants us to come to him with that same heart. The, the persistence that we see in the words that we read in Matthew 7, it says that we ask. It's, it's, it's not just a simple request. It's really going with a heart of, Lord, this is my deepest need. And, and we don't always even know the solution for those needs. But we go to the Lord in faith and we go to him asking that he will take care of our needs. We seek him. We look for him. We, we seek his will. We seek his ways. We seek what he would have us to do for him. And, and it says, finally, that we knock and it will be open to you. One commentary I read on this, it says it's not just a knock on the door, but it's actually a picture of taking a stick and hitting it on the door so that people hear you and they know that you need to come in. And these are the pictures that, that Jesus would give to his disciples and followers to describe how we come to the Lord and how we come to him and how much he loves us. But what's great about this passage is how he finishes and shows God's great love. He, he gives examples. He says, if your son were to ask you for bread, if you're a parent, if you're a father or a, a mother, and your son asks you for bread, you're not going to give him a stone. And if he asks you for a fish, you're not going to give him a snake. And he says, in the same way, if you're fallen, if you're evil, he actually says, if you're in this evil fallen world and you're living in the consequence of that sin and you know how to take care of your kids in the right way, how much more, and those are key words there, how much more is your father in heaven going to give you the good things to those who ask him. Now, does this mean that we get everything that we ask for? No, because just as every parent knows, not everything your child asks for is always good for them. But what we are assured of is that our Father in heaven loves us, he cares for us, he hears us, and he knows what's best, and he will always give us the good things that we need. It may not always be the monetary. It may not always be the money or the, the satisfaction of what we wanted persistently on our own mind and on our own accord. But as we come to him, as we ask him for his will to be done within our lives and to take care of the needs that we have, as we seek him wholeheartedly, looking for him to do the work that he's wanting to do in our lives, and as we knock on the door, as we come to him persistently, we can trust that we have a father who loves us so much, who cares so much. He's already given so much through his son, Jesus Christ. And he wants to continue to hear our prayers and to answer our prayers. And it's always for our good and always for our best. Hope you have a great day.